I do other things other than acting. I do other businesses. I'm into estates. Um, I'm, um, I also do other other work that I don't even necessarily want to talk about in uh, in public. Um, so yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't like I was an in industry. I, I, I said somewhere, and, I, and that's the truth. I actually made more money in those three years that I wasn't acting than, than I, I made, made from acting. So acting, when I started, of course, was very um, instrumental to me financially and all of that because I was coming from a place of um, nothingness and all of that after I lost my dad. But, you know, you grow and you have yours, you know. So, I, um, so going out of the industry for three years, I wouldn't say... Uh, affected me uh, financially. Um, also, I have a partner, so it's not like everything is basically on me or anything. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't financially. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't a problem financially. Well, for me, everybody has what it is that they want in life. Um, I'm married and um, I do not expect to do everything by myself. So I'm not going to um, say, oh, because I'm a strong woman. So I, I'm, I believe in the traditional sense of relationships and how marriage should be. It is the husband's responsibility to take care of his family, but also as a wife, um, it is nice for you to help. So I, I help and I do my own beats. Um, there's some things I would not ask him for ordinarily just because I can't and I personally I just find it very awkward going to say give me this or and personally because of my own experience the way I grew up I've always been an independent person I've, I've been working since I was 15 um, I started taking care of my younger ones and paying school fees at the age of 15 I mean yeah 15 so it's it's all, for me as a as a personal experience it's almost uh, impossible right now for me to go ask someone but then he knows his responsibility and will do what he needs to do so I'm just saying that if push comes to shove I know that I, but ordinarily I got mine so. <laughs> so. not like I plan 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 but I, I mean of course I did from the point where I knew that I wanted to go start building infrastructure I've been thinking about it for a while before that time so um, I had saved up some money that I needed to start looking for. I actually got a place in Jerry first, um, but it was so expensive. I told a friend of mine about it and I was asking if he could partner with me. Eventually he bought it for himself. <laughs> he bought it for himself and he's building a hotel on it right now. But at the end of the day, um, I now found something that was more in my own league and what I could afford, which was on Mobalaji Batantoni, which was very expensive as well. Too, but it was it was better than what I found in Jerry at the time, so I immediately bought it. Um, it was a smaller place, and if anybody knows very well, um, I bought. Now I have the whole streets. I bought the whole street, but initially what I had was just the front property on the express, and um, I bought that from uh, a bank. And <laughs> at that time, everybody said what I was doing for the amount of money I was spending was not wise. Um, because it was just a little part, you know, and then it was still set back from the express and so what I would have had was just um, But I knew in my spirit that once I have a, I had a leg in it would be easier for me to buy up other ones on this Which is exactly what happened. So in those three years that I was away from the industry pretty much I was buying properties That's what I was doing. So I bought the first one and then Luckily the one in the middle opened up. I bought that from a brigadier and then uh, no, sorry the one in the middle I bought from another bank um, that happened afterwards, and then the last one at the end of, of the street, I bought that from um, uh, from a, a, milita uh, a brigadier general, and and so luckily, so that took time. Of course, takes negotiation; it takes years for things to open up, and so yeah, that's how that happens. So wasn't as if I bought everything at the same time, but you know, um, I did that gradually over the period of time. I want a lot of people to understand is. Um, Actually, you get your point in this career, your source of income does not come from the industry anymore. And then that's a lot of people be like, well, how much do they earn? That's why I found that we earn quite a lot, <laughs> you know, even in movies and all of that. The truth of the matter is your source of income, if you're smart and if you know what you're doing, it gets to a point in your career, your source, your major source of income will not come from the industry. What the industry does for you is gives you leverage, it gives you favor. Um, and it gives you um, opportunities, you know, 
that ordinarily, for example, in my property business, a lot of people trust me. People trust my brand. So when I say to someone that I'm, I'm selling this property or this estate or whatever, um, you might need to, you know, send emails like five times, talk, 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 go and pitch, go and pitch, maybe go and attach yourself to a bigger company or whatever. All I just need to do is just say, Amortal is the one in charge and they want to verify truly Amortal is the one in charge and if, if, if it is, they just trust my brand. And so I sell my properties quick, quicker. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that's what, if you have a name in the industry and if it's something that, you know, if it's a good brand, that's what it does for you. So it's, it's now up to you to decide what, what kind of business actually goes with my image. What kind of business will thrive with my brand and then understand that and then do that as an offshoot of what you have earned or gained as a brand from the industry. So a lot of people in the industry actually make money. So when you say, oh, how much do they pay them? Really, you're missing the mark. <laughs>
I've met a lady who says I don't care what she does. The, but she, if she says it to someone else, will be like, you should care. He will give you disease. You, but do you know if, if she sleeps with her husband with protection? I don't, I'm just saying. Have you asked her, oh, do you sleep with your husband with protection? So that at least you know he's not going to give you whatever. I'm just saying, for example. So what if she does and that's, and that's taken care of? And then so the emotional part, she doesn't care. Maybe she's just as cold as him. Or maybe she, she's cheating and she's like, you know what? Everybody can do whatever they like. As long as we're together, we respect each other. You don't know people's relationships. So you can't, you can't judge their relationship. Only they know what boat they're in. And they have to decide. When I put my relationship on, 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 on that level, on that um, equilibrium or whatever, do I have more peace? Do I have more happiness than sadness? Do I have more joy than, um, than you know, hurt or whatever? Or does the bad you know, outweigh the good? And is this person hopeless? That's another thing. Is this person hopeless? Is it just about cheating? Or is this person bad with so many other things? He's not responsible, he doesn't even take care of you, he doesn't take care of the children, he's not romantic, he doesn't, um, he doesn't do things for you, he's not responsible, he's not godly, he's not God-fearing, and stuff like that. So when you think about so many things in the picture, then you, you decide for yourself. Um, decide for yourself and don't uh, just uh, don't allow everyone's opinion to you know um, because it's a, it's a decision within you god and that person you always have to remember that not a decision within you that person and social media on or all of us is within you god and that person so it's a very serious thing um, that you need to go to god about and weigh your options and when you take your decision know and be at peace with whatever your decision is A difficult thing to say I won't say people are impatient with marriage because I would say we have two different kinds of people in marriages we have the ones who um, give you a very long group and when they say it's over you can't change their mind I'm, I fall into that kind of person uh, that kind of uh, category I'm the kind of person that in a relationship I would give you a long group but when I say I'm done I'm done I, I don't look back so you might if I look at that person and say oh this person is taking a lot and there's some people that so you don't know but when you might only know from the point when the person say, oh, I'm done. And then you'll be like, oh, this person is impatient. But you don't know how much money that person has taken. Or I, the other kind of people are the people that maybe when it happens, they shout, they shout, they shout, they shout, but they don't do anything about it. You know, and all of that stuff. So when they say it's done, you'll be like, you said it done, it was done last week. Now you said it. So, so there are different kinds of people. But at the end of the day, I think that women mostly, uh, no matter at what point you see them say they're done, Women in relationships are usually the ones who really want the relationship to work. I'm not saying men don't, I'm just saying women are the ones who put that extra and who are afraid of it actually even um, breaking in the first place because um, it's just in us. We're naturally maternal, um, our nature is to nurture, and so whether we like it or not, <laughs> it's what God has made us. So we just want to nurture it. So we, we keep caring. Even, it's just, even look at animals. Even when they are, let's say their child or their puppy or whatever has died, you see that they keep leaking that puppy. They, they want to bring it back to life, even when they know it's gone. So that's what women are, we are, we are, we are nurturers. We, even when that marriage is dead, you see they are still trying to uh, bring it back to life, see if there's anything there. So, I want, so when you see a woman walk away from the marriage, the truth of the matter is she has really tried. She must have tried everything. It doesn't mean that there are, there are no bad women or there are no bad women out there. There are some that with their own hands they have scattered their own um, or maybe because they are not mature or something um, but i think people really try to hold it down before it definitely goes but i would also advise people to seek help i think a lot of people are afraid to um seek advice and wait till it is too late you know and it's because of the culture of silence that we have in africa you know i remember even when i was going to get married too they would say don't discuss your marriage with anybody to some extent, I agree, don't discuss your marriage with your friends, but you must have people that you trust, that you can discuss with. Maybe um, a therapist, in Africa we don't have too much of that, or in Nigeria we don't have too much of that, or you don't trust them. So let it be your parents, maybe one of your parents, one of, one of your parents, maybe your mother or your father, whoever you are closer to that you know can, that is mature, not the person that maybe after you finish settling with your spouse now, they will, they will still be carrying on the fight or whatever, but someone that you know can give you sound advice, or it could be a spiritual leader. Uh, have at least one person, not plenty of people, but at least one person that you can confide in. 
that can give you sound wisdom you know on how to manage that situation because sometimes you can make irrational decisions you know i've been married for 21 years but i've not been in love for 21 years there are times when periodically or instantly i feel like it, you know i'm done right now but you might not feel like that the next day you know that's how relationships are so if you make a decision in that moment you might regret it for the rest of the life but if you have somebody you trust at that time that person will tell you calm down maybe you separate from this person for that day go somewhere else calm your head down or you know something and then you'll be thankful for that kind of advice because they have wisdom because they have probably lived through it as well yeah deceit people everyone knows me um i, I can forgive anything if you tell me that's just the person i am just make sure i know i think the things i hate yeah i keep telling fool i i keep telling myself if my husband does anything i tell him tell me once you tell me eh, i can get angry or whatever but it's but you're sorted because I, I will defend you that's just me i will defend you um i might i might be angry with you but i will still defend you because you have told me so at that point for me honor is important and that's the way my own brain is wired for me it's about honor so for me the fact that you were honorable enough to tell me i respect you and i will defend you it doesn't mean that you and i are cool but i will defend you do you get my point um so that's it for me but if you don't tell me and i find out or someone else tells me you have broken the honor chain that's the way it works for me you have broken the honor chain and so for me that might be unforgivable <laughs> that is just that's, i said everyone is different that's left to me i might i might not it's not what i'm saying it, it's not it, it doesn't matter i i might or i might not um no not i might or i might not i will forgive him doesn't mean i'm staying with him okay. that's those are two different things okay. but that you tell me is 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 healing enough for me it doesn't mean that it's right what you did it doesn't mean that i'm okay with what you did but i'm fine with the fact that you are human you messed up and you owned up to it so for me that is that is that is the way my brain processes things and i'm saying this also in light of other things it's not just about relationship even with my staff i always tell them you are human you are not an angel you are not god you will make mistakes when you do even my kids tell me because if i can fix it if you don't tell me and it goes out there or anything then you have deprived me of the opportunity to even help in the first place so it might be too late at that point so now i'm dealing with so many other things now i'm dealing with you shaming me i'm dealing with how my emotions are now with hearing it from someone else and i'm dealing with trusting you now you have given me way too many odds to work with other than it would have just been the mistake alone so that's the way it is for me really anyway